Hi, it's me, Extreme Retriever, a linguist, founder of Familingua and Lingua Plus. And I've already talked to you about emotions and languages. And today I'd like to emphasize that when you take up learning a new language, you shouldn't just um, be thinking about grammar and vocabulary. You should, you should be thinking about much more. Because I believe that this holistic approach um, of learning some words, grammar constructions, and that's it, going and speaking, is quite limited. From my studies, my research, well, practice, teaching people, learning as well different languages, I must admit that when you start learning something new, especially when you talk about language and culture, you need to connect to yourself. What I mean by it, that it's not just this mechanical approach, right? Oh, grammar, a, he, she, it, a, 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 whatever, yeah, verbs. But it's a deep psychological phenomenon. Language is a psychological phenomenon, meaning that starting speaking a new language you start expressing yourself by this name, new language. And you're expressing yourself also in new culture, in new society, because eventually this is a door, right? Like for, for communication, both ways. And when you start learning, you shouldn't be thinking, oh gosh, I'm making mistakes here. I'm not sure how to, to pronounce this or how to say that, or I don't have vocabulary for these words, or I totally uh, like, forgot how to, well, change verbs, let's say in the past. No, it's about how to convey your thoughts and how to convey like your emotional states, your emotions. And maybe you've seen that some people are utterly good at explaining with gestures. They may not speak at all in another language, but they would be showing, like speaking with hands, right? Maybe facial expressions. It's like um, starting including uh, word prosody. Prosody, it's everything what's non-verbal, but what actually accompanies a verbal act. And I suggest that you start doing the same, that your goal should be to understand and be understood. And there is a thing that's called um, linguistic intuition. And I suggest that you start developing it as soon as possible. Because the thing is, you can't be sure 100% that you understand exactly what the person is saying and that you are 100% understood. Because it's words. The words can be interpreted in so many different ways, even in your own language, your native language. And I understand that there is this psychological trap that if I'm speaking in my native language and if I'm successful at it, meaning that I understand and I'm understood, so it's like I'm understood 100% and I understand everything what other people say. But when I switch to another language that I'm just stubborn learning, oh, it's so annoying. I don't understand them. Or I understand only like 20% and they understand me like 20%. So like, uh, it's a mess. No. We interpret each other's speeches. We interpret each other's words. And often, especially in some difficult conversations, where feelings, emotions are involved, the conflicts, we often ask to repeat or rephrase even the same language, just like making sure that we understand what the person means. The same happens in another language, in a foreign language. So the goal should be to convey the message by any means, words, gestures, special expressions, different tones, pictures, and then seek to understand the other party. And when you seek to understand, try to use your linguistic intuition, try to guess. Because eventually what happens is that when you are in a certain context, like sociocultural context, you definitely will be getting 
what the people are saying. And when they are knowing the meaning of all the words. And it's also about eyes. What I mean by eyes, like they say eyes are the door to the soul and all this. I believe it's connected to cognition because we know when you look at these eyes of another person, if this person is lying, if this person is sad or hiding something, right? Or and like smiling, happy. It's also about the language where the person understands or doesn't understand, you know, this look of understanding, the look of fear or a lot of emotions are expressed here through the eyes. And what you can do, you can start focusing instead of lips more on the eyes and all facial expression in order to read the person. Here, you will notice that just language or language studies won't be enough because it's already, well, so-called intercultural psychology is starting to play, then getting into place. And for this, you need cultural intelligence. So when you start learning to speak another language, you also need to start picking up cultural intelligence of that language of the culture society where you're trying to fit in. And it's um, nothing scary. Nothing scary in terms of like how you are approaching it. Because the more you are equipped with its new skills or new knowledge, the better. The thing is that you need to start speaking language from day one, meaning not to just like play apps, uh, practicing some phrases, some words, but actually start speaking, whether it's your teacher, whether it's your peer, music, whoever, and try, well, <laughs> not saying kill your inner critic, but try to kind of put him down or... Because your inner critic, especially very strong, right? Be trying to push you somewhere into the corner of the room. Just uh, say, no, you can't speak like that. You will sound stupid. No. Concentrate, believe in yourself. Because without practicing, without speaking, actually with mistakes and attempting to establish a contact, you won't progress. And the thing what I notice as well, like in practice, that a lot of students get stuck in their communication by just practicing with their, their teacher or their tutor, especially if it's only one tutor. That's why, like, at Malingo, we've been always like trying to work with different tutors um, for students, like different programs, different tutors, because then you psychologically start feeling more comfortable by adapting to different styles, different conversations, different accents. And uh, what happens, so what I've seen that if there is like a student with just one tutor practicing, this uh, student uh, feels comfortable, psychologically comfortable with only one person for let's say like, a few years, but then mm -hmm. this uh, student gets out into the real world or start talking to let's say other tutors, suddenly there is this, you know, like kind of like a wall, yeah, that happens. And person either goes blank or really feels panic. And something inside here impedes him, her speaking. So therefore, you need to emphasize going out there and talking. Because remember, when you were a child, we were all were right babies. We would actually learn speaking just like, yeah, picking up from the context, from the atmosphere, repeating, you know. But the thing was that we didn't care. We were like coming up with new words. And I also love playing with that, coming up with new words, with new phrases, um, just uh, playing like linguistic creativity and seeing how people would react, how natives would react. Probably they'll laugh, but uh, it's cool, it's great, um, it's good vibes. And this will help you to progress further on in your learning without fear, but actually like taking some irony, like self-irony with you. Well, I hope you got my message, what I was trying to convey, that you need to develop your linguistic intuition, 
linguistic creativity. Please don't be afraid of mistakes. Try to deal with your inner critic. Go ahead and try to speak as much as you can and try also to understand others.